Hello everybody and welcome to episode 8 in my Frostpunk campaign let's play for the new home scenario on hard difficulty. Now we left off in the last episode after we just got done reeling from a disaster campaign so to speak where we ran out of coal in our generator, everything started powering down, things became freezing, people started being thrown out of the sick bays because they were just too cold, the hothouse, the cookhouse, nothing was operational, it was a pretty big disaster. But we somehow managed to survive it with very little damage. No one so far has become gravely ill. There are 75 people who are ill, so that is a lot, and that is going to affect our economy. But, on the bright side of things, nobody became gravely ill, nobody died, and the generator actually didn't fully power down. It slowly starts powering down. You do feel the temperature effect from it being not fed coal anymore, but you don't necessarily hit, get the hope and discontent hit that you otherwise would when it totally powers off. Because then the people get very, very rowdy when that kind of thing happens. So, luckily we somehow, somehow managed to sort of get by. And we're going to be trying in this episode to deal with this short period that we have where things are a little warmer and then we're going to hit this next cold snap of negative 70 degrees. So that's going to be pretty rough because the last one for people who might not remember was negative 60. So we're going 10 degrees worse than that. Another temperature level drop. So it's going to be challenging. But I do think the tough decisions we made in the last episode where I cancelled tech and changed some things around has put us in a better position to survive the negative 70 degrees. Now to survive that, we're definitely gonna need automatons up and running. So that's gonna be the goal of this one, is to get our first automaton, if we can, in time for that, or at least early on, so that we can actually produce coal or produce something, steel, whatever it might be, while the cold snap is going on. Uh, and that's essentially it. So right now, just to do a little recap, we have two scouting parties on the way back. They're about to bring us a huge amount of resources, which is gonna be great, so we have the first party coming back with 125 wood and 106 steel, and the other party with 350 wood and 100 food rations. So, tons of food coming in, or sorry, tons of wood coming in, a little bit of food and a little bit of steel, and then both of them arriving with two steam cores. So we're going to have up to 12 steam cores, and that's after we've put down three so far in our game so far. <clears throat> so that's the situation. Um... The only other thing is we're obviously arriving with quite a lot of wood now, so what we need to do is have some stockpiles set up. Now, we started building them at the end of the last episode. In between episodes, I'm not too sure why, but for some reason, I don't get to see the number of people going to build this. I don't know. Normally, it just says it. Uh, like, if I was... I'm going to dismantle this building, by the way. So, I'm going to dismantle this. When you dismantle, like, it says 0 out of 5. I know that no one's technically dismantling it yet, but these, these don't say that for some reason. The stockpiles don't seem to show that number. I don't know why. Well, whatever whatever the reason, it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, anyway, the reason I'm deleting this uh, Hunter's Hut right now is going to reposition it somewhere over here later. Uh, I want to have another infirmary bay here, because we do have 20 sick people not being treated, 55 who are, and I'd like to kind of convert everyone into infirmaries, just because that's obviously a more efficient way to process the sick. Um... It's faster, we have the medic apprentices, there's more engineers in the one building and stuff like that. So, I don't know, it just seems like a better way to get through them. So that's what we're going to be trying to do, is, is make sure that none of the people that we have from the last episode that were out in the freezing cold fall, gravely ill, get frostbite or whatever else their problems might be. Uh, so let me just take stock of the situation again. Uh, let me just check the generator. So generator's all good. We're on level heat level 1, heat zone 1. So we're only heating the inner circle right now. But still, even at that, most places are chilly and livable right now. So that's not too bad. We're going to be looking to upgrade the tents here. We should have al already had them as bunkhouses, really. And that's probably massively impacted us in terms of how many sick people we took on. But uh, we needed the steel and wood to be able to do so. We're not going to get that for a while yet. All right, so what else is going on? So it is work time. I know it says we have 39 people not working, but to be honest, there's not really anywhere we can assign them because most of them are sick. So there's not much we can do there. We do have plenty of food. And some people are saying, you know, switch back to uh, the standard meal. So we've done that, obviously, in the last, at the end of the last episode, which is good. But I, every now and then, I might switch to soup. I know it does add discontent. Obviously, another major thing I forgot to mention is that we're going to be severely trying to lower that discontent because it is quite high. Uh, you know, two or three bad events, and that's it, will be overthrown in government. Uh, on the Londoners' front, things are going well. Tendency is trending down with two chevrons, so I'm guessing that's going to be about ten people. Maybe eight people will drop out, 
after whenever the event occurs like every day i think it checks that and then we lose some or we gain some so we'll see what happens there and we still have to build a prison which means we need to sign the prison law and deal with all that which i think actually adds discontent uh, at first so that's going to be a bit rough so we'll have to just do that when i feel like i can manage it rather than immediately all right let's let things play just on a kind of regular speed while i come to get to grips with everything so yeah, it looks like in the next three to four hours we're going to start getting so much wood that the sawmills are actually going to go offline. And that's because, like, uh, you know, we're going to hit our stockpile of wood. So the faster we can get this building up and running, the better. It looks like there's people heading out there. You know, John Fulmer, he's heading out to do the building. Uh, so is Andrew Walpole. So I'm going to be hoping that they, they can get the job done. We're actually getting through the sick already. 18 sick, not being treated, 55 who are. And uh, maybe if the infirmaries do well, we can actually reduce some of the um, some of the medical bays around here. I was hoping, I don't know if there's any more people out in the wasteland, or in the frostland, I should say. I'm guessing there probably is, but I don't know. Uh, and if there is, it'd be nice to make these actually houses. So we could get rid of the two medical bays, medical bays there if we end up having uh, an extra infirmary, which is what the plan is. Okay, and our current technology is the gathering post insulation. Yes, so we have four gathering posts out here gathering coal from the steam coal thumper. The other two coal thumpers are offline right now, but that's okay because we actually can't even gather from them as fast as we can. Like, there's no point in churning up that coal. We're gathering at our limit right now, so it's fine. Uh, but it's good to have them there just in case we do get the extra people that we want to stick on them or another gathering post or whatever the case might be. There's no harm, really. In fact... Okay, so our first scouts returned with 125 wood, 106 steel. So we'll just pause it really quickly. I am going to just turn these buildings off. I don't like having the red icons around. It makes me feel like I'm making a mistake, but I'm choosing to turn them off. So we'll turn them off so I can recognize that symbol instead. So the sawmills have gone offline now. There's only 79 wood left here. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so the first, yeah, as soon as this thing gets done, 40% construction, I'll make that a wood stockpile. And in fact, just right now, See, our, our sawmills have gone offline because they have no more room to store the wood. You can take on more than you can store, like with the arrival of different scouting parties, but you can't actually you can't actually keep processing stuff while you're at your stockpile limit. Oops, wrong building. Uh, so, resource depot. We'll just get another one here. Just keep them building these. I think we're probably going to need about four of them. Right, our scouting party is back. It's the guys that came from the east, so we'll send them back out towards the research station first. Let's have a little read. An oddly shaped building, bristling with various antennas and instruments. It looks like some kind of research facility. Alright, so those, that scouting party is on its way back out. Two days to get there, and that's with the improved scouting sleds, isn't it? So, uh, Good thing we got that tech, because <clears throat> it's already going to take quite a long time. What was that? That's the laws. So we could sign the law for prisons, or we could do patrols. So patrols will reduce discontent and they'll raise hope slightly. And that allows us to give 10 food rations to call, uh, start a patrol. And hope will rise slightly. Now the thing is, how much time do we have to build this prison? Two days? So we could enact both laws. I'm pretty confident that we can do both. So we'll do patrol and then prison. What is an agitator? Strategically placed loudspeakers will remind citizens of the importance of their work and increase their efficiency. The agitator. I'm not sure what that actually says. The final uh, thing there. Forceful persuasion. Jesus. Pledge of loyalty. People make mistakes, but we can give them a chance to redeem themselves if they agree to cooperate, of course. The art is so good, isn't it? I just think it's so good. All right. Um, the, having it just move slightly and then having all this kind of effects around it just brings it to life in such a great way. All right. So I'm going to go with patrol. Patrols will ensure neighborhoods are safe and orderly. New law has passed. I thought he used the loudspeaker. Oh well, whatever. Um, so yeah, patrols. So that means if we toggle this and we toggle this, discontent will fall and hope will rise. It takes one day, it takes ten food rations. Oh my god, yeah, wow, that lowered discontent quite a lot. <clears throat> Can we do it with each one? No, so it's a, a an ability for everything. Okay, that makes sense. All right, let's speed it up just a little bit. I think we're good to go. The generator is cooling down from its radical amount of overdrive that we put on. Simon Ashton says, good, this will keep the crooks off the streets. James Windham says, it'll be encouraging to meet the law face to face. Okay, we have our wood stockpile now. That's good. So our wood is now producing again. 
the searchlights, man. They're so cool. Tons of steel coming in. Look at that. 190, 200, basically, and then 355. So now we can, tonight, during the, the evening, free time, we'll start building up all the houses and things like that. And our new uh, group is about to arrive back home. Excellent. So, we have an abundance of food rations, a nice amount of food, 200 steel, 700 wood, and 600 coal. So things are looking good. Coal is actually probably a little bit low. Uh, and we'll lift the construction of that. So now is the time to get our infirmary down. Fits beautifully right in there. And then we're going to also improve some of the houses. Now I need to kind of think this through. I reckon we've got two hours. I think we'll complete that technology. So we'll need to save up on our steel. Well, we have plenty of steel, but I want to get the factory technology next and then build a factory, obviously, somewhere. Uh, I'm probably just going to remove this and build a factory here. Although we can leave it until the morning and see what happens with it. And you know what? A lot of discontent actually comes from cold at home and bad food. So the bad food thing should go away soon because we're feeding everyone standard meals now again. And then as well as that, the cold at home is mostly from houses like this, tents. The more we add bunk houses and make livable situations, the better that'll get as well. So we've got a problem here. A heating riot, angry about the cold. Captain, our people are angry about the cold in their homes. They've gathered to protest against your neglect in the of their suffering, demanding that you act immediately. The Londoners have infiltrated the crowd and they use the people's anger to turn them against you. We better do something. Okay, we could let he let's heat the homes. You'll have to start sorry <laughs> you'll have to start heating 12 homes within two days then keep them heated for three let's heat all homes you'll have to start heating 24 cold homes within 24 hours they keep them heated for three days or disperse the crowd or i won't address this now i won't address this now i'll rise discontent disperse the crowd apparently won't and it doesn't say people will get hurt it doesn't seem like there's any drawback to that at least not that it's telling me I can't heat the homes again. This is, again, the same problem I keep getting. They want me to fulfill promises when I know the temperature drop is going to drop within 30 degrees. It's like, dude, like, don't you see the weather forecast or is it just me? <laughs> it's going to get colder. So disperse the crowd. I know people are memeing a little bit in the comments that I keep doing that, but you got to do it. got to do it. Get the hell out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. 12 sick people not being treated, 9 people hungry. That's all right. This next building is under construction. Cool. All right, so let's... Our wood stockpile is full again. We can actually change this later if we end up diminishing it anyway. So now we've got room for wood to be processed again later. Okay, so our technology did just about get done. Two minutes to spare before the end of the day. Perfect. Well done to... Where's our, where's our couple? Brendan Hawkins and Cody McGill. Appreciate that. Working through the night to get it done. Jack Absolute, Rob Taylor, some legendary patrons of mine. Don't recognize the others. All right. So the engineer's doing God's work in there. So that's really great. So let's choose what we're going to get next. Some people were saying get overdrive couplings, which is pretty good. You know, you, you raise two heat, le heat levels during overdrive time, but it's obviously just overdrive time, right? So... It's a very temporary buff, but it is a great reprieve. It basically means that when you toggle the overdrive on, you can actually lower, if you wanted to, you could lower the steam level of the uh, main generator. So I guess in theory, it would save you some coal, potentially, during overdrive time. So it's definitely one to keep an eye on. Insulation, coal mining. Do we have the factory? No, that's what we need to get next. That's the factory. I'm hearing a little bit of a riot in my right ear right now. What's going on, guys? You can just hear it around here somewhere. Don't quite see it. Margaret Trench. She's in the trenches. Lord Neocon. There he is. What a legend. Still going. I believe he's a hunter. Actually, no. If he was a hunter, he'd be uh, he'd be out right now. So he must have given up that job. <laughs> Maybe he was sick for a while, because there are some sick absences. Actually, speaking of, we need an extra hunter's hut. That could be why he's not working anymore, because we did remove a bunch. That only costs wood, so I don't mind paying that. So, a couple hunter's huts there. We're probably only going to use one of them. We, I, I mean, we don't even really need them, but we, it's good to have them, just in case. No, no harm in storing extra food if we have the manpower to go out and actually get it, right? Alright, let's speed it up a bit. 
Oh, oh my god, I'm an idiot. Sorry, that must have been there for ages. So our scouting party needs to head back out. Go, go, go. Shrouded cave. Two days, eight hours. Sorry about that. They must have been there for quite a few hours, just chilling, waiting out. I always catch myself saying that. It's like, oh, they're just chilling. It's like, oh, mean puns. Frostpunk. It's cold. I get it. All right, cool. This is done. Ten more engineers straight in there. A lot of them are sick themselves, but whatever. In fact, hang on. I knew it. We have engineers on this. Get the hell off that. There we go. Now everyone's in there working it. Some people are going to eat, though, of course, but that's fine. So three infirmaries. Everyone's going to be treated. That's 60 people under care right now with, I think, a potential of 65. Um, so that's fine. So we're, we're good. And as we start getting through them, like I said, I'm going to start dismantling some of these smaller ones uh, in towards the generator. Now, that did cost us a steam core. That's three steam cores dedicated to medicine the whole time. Maybe that's overkill. I don't know. I just feel like we do have a lot. Like, we still have 11. And every automaton costs one, so we could easily have, like, I don't know, six or seven automatons and then still have room for, like, three buildings or something that require them, should that be the case. So I think we're doing all right. Uh, our other resource depot has been built. Might be worth having it on food rations and another one on coal. We need to do as much building as we can during the night like this because, you know, when this cold snap happens in one more day... Um, you know, we don't want people out there building in the cold. Plenty of steel. So we're going to need, for the factory, we need something like 15 steel and then 100 per automaton. So we're okay for a while. So what I'm going to do is build a up a couple houses. I'll just build three for now. And uh, we'll add to them later. This is bunk houses, by the way. So we're converting some of the tents into bunk houses. And you might be like, oh, well, it's close to generator. What's the problem? But we did see, obviously, when the temperature dropped, having that extra layer of insulation from a bunkhouse to a tent is very, is just vital uh, when the temperature gets pretty rough. All right, how's everything? So the these little bars, by the way, are telling me that the efficiency of these certain buildings are a bit low, the watchtowers, but it doesn't seem to actually affect anything, as we mentioned in the last uh, in the last episode. So it's a bit of a distraction having those numbers just visible like that, but I don't really mind. It doesn't seem to affect anything, but maybe we'll pay the price later. I don't know. So we're getting some sick people tonight. Uh, like I said, we can have 65. Okay, so everyone is being treated right now. That's a damn shame. So we'll assign people that one. I'm not going to assign people to this one. We'll just leave it off for now. And then we have, yeah, what did we, did I say? Maybe food? We're just sticking on food rations for now, because we're going to be arriving back in six hours with a hundred... Actually, maybe raw food. Yeah, let's do raw food, because tonight we're going to bring in a lot, and we've already got 190 not cooked. All right, cool. And all the houses are now built on the inner ring. What's this? Discontentious went up, and we got a message. Another theft. Captain, the Londoners are stealing again. They've taken 10 food rations from the stockpiles. People are angry that the Londoners are putting their crazy idea before the needs of the city. Send the guards to catch them. So retrieve some food or let them be. Discontent's quite low now, so I'm just going to let them be. <laughs> it is a pretty massive jump when we leave it be, though. <laughs> um, and I laugh about it, but it is quite serious. I think we are heat, uh, getting through the sick, though, pretty well now. I mean, we are piling them up during the nights, as always, it seems. People are angry about the thefts. Uh, came back to bite me. A crowd has gathered, demanding that you stop ignoring the recent thefts. Sir, you have to do something when you let these thieves steal our supplies. More and more people think that the Londoners are right and will be safer going with them. We need a prison to lock up the thieves. I won't do anything about it now or disperse the crowd. <laughs> I can't, I don't think I could do that. The Londoners will rise, the hope will fall, the discontent will rise. Discontent will rise, the protests will be forcibly dispersed. Or we could just say, yeah, look, we'll build a prison. What's the big deal? I already said I'd build a prison, so I feel like we'll just do that. Now it says I have three days to build one. It still says a day in 23 down here. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so just two days, so two days of tech. Or no, not tech, the law, the next law, and then we can just pop it down. Yeah, no problems. No problems, don't worry about it, it's fine. Uh, okay. 
We signed this. So what do we have then? Oh, it looks like the storage buildings actually look different. Yeah, they just look a little different. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll just leave that until we need it. Okay, cool. So we've got another message. First Londoners convinced to stay. Oh, nice. Sir, sir, several of the people who wanted to flee to London have decided to trust you and stay. They say that your recent decisions convinced them that there is hope yet. Uh, so 45. Awesome. It was on 54. So nine people stayed. So we have five days left of that. So if we got nine every... F I mean, if we just got nine every single day from now on, then no one would leave. But I do feel like we might need this to trend further down one more time. So if we could just really push the hope just that little bit further, maybe things would be all right. Uh, okay, it's 5 a.m. Let's let time play and speed it up. I'm just keeping an eye on that sick. We are getting through them pretty nicely, actually, I must say. So if we go to patients here, a couple hours, some people are now going to treatment. One, two, three, four hours, not seeing anything longer than three or four. That's great. People abandon Londoners, awesome. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, I think we're kind of on the ball now, a little bit more. 100 food coming in, still process making the nice meals or the regular meals, which is good. Coal production is probably what we need most, which is why we're getting the automatons up and running. So yeah, maybe we could do something about that. We are churning up coal here. We've got four gathering posts all gathering it. So there's really not much I can do other than putting down another gathering post. Which might help. But we just have a bit too many sick right now to do that. That's, a, that's the problem. We don't have anyone to work it, essentially. Alright, food's coming back now in just a moment. So we're up to 225, and then in 40 minutes we're going to be up to 325. So good thing we stored some. I think what happens is, from what I've read, that uh, when the outpost comes back, and if they have too much food for the stockpile, they actually just wait here until they can drop it off. Um, which in itself is kind of inefficient, right? So, Alright, so, um, we don't have anyone on the sawmill. It'd be good to just grab... Yeah, we don't have the factory tech yet, so let's just finish off getting as much as we can here. Well, there's nobody here to do it. There we go. Now, what I might do with this all this food rations that we have right now is activate four men on the tech. It's only like 12% extra tech, but I do feel like it's worth it. I don't know, I just feel like that. We can only do it every time we get 10 rations. There we go. So some people do have to go hungry. <laughs> there we go. All right, cool. So now the rest of the food can be made into actual rations. All right, we're getting through sick people up to 65 is how much we could have, but we only have 56 in treatment right now. One person, Harvey Payne, is apparently working while he's sick. Uh, where are you? Harvey Payne, man, I, I get it, but you should really go. Just go. Send him off. Talk about micromanaging. Uh, okay, so what's the situation now? So we have just about a day to go until this uh, temperature drop. So things are going to get rough. But tonight we can do the building, finish off the houses that we need. We have 160 steel, 600 wood. So plenty for the factory, plenty for what I assume is going to be the prison. Factory is going to be done in 80 and 10% research time. So let's start dismantling this building, get this one out of the way. So just as soon as this is done, roughly we can put this new thing down. What the hell is this? Are you fucking kidding me? Grim news from the propaganda center. Sir, there's been a terrible accident in one of our in industrial facilities. Almost an entire team of workers has been killed. Should we cover it up and tell the people that they went on an urgent expedition? What? You can't just kill people on an accident. What? The accident will be covered up or hope will fall. Uh... Well, I I guess cover it up, right? Nothing ever goes wrong with cover-ups. It's better for us all. Look, I just don't want hope to fall. We need the Londoners to stay. I can't believe people just die. Although maybe it's because the propaganda was running, because it's from the propaganda center. So maybe it's like, oh, you activated propaganda. That guy killed himself, and now you have five people dying in an accident. I don't know if that's related or not. Or maybe these people, maybe it's just, there's always a chance that someone can die in an accident. And if you have a propaganda center, you get to do something about it. Let's cover it up. Oh my god. Five people died? 
Lucy Benton, Rotor Raban, Bert Clark, Rory Towler, and Theodore Edwards. Rest in peace. On day 25, five of our people died. And that does give us a little bit of a hope hit. Five adult died. Instantly replaced. But man, that blows. I can't believe that. You can't just kill people. <laughs> it's like, what? So that's going to be, we've already, we've had two people die. One from stress, hacks out Calvin Cotton from suicide. And now five people in a work accident. I don't know if I count any of these. <laughs> the only ones I would count are like people who get sick. Or riots, maybe. I don't know. I guess it is all under while I was ruling. But still, feels un unfair. Alright, the factory is researched. Let's get our next tech, which I think I'm going to go for. Um, I was just thinking about it. He improved heaters. And then maybe the overdrives. Improved heaters allows us to go up by two levels in certain areas. And I think it just provides me a bit more control. So I'm going to go with that. So 30 wood, 20 steel. Let's go. When this cold snap happens, by the way... This tech building is going to go off. Anything that's chilly right now that isn't within two range of the generator is going to basically go offline. So this watchtower, this watchtower, that tech building, they're going to go offline. And there ain't much I can do about that. The only other thing I can think of is putting the tech building where these two medical bays are after, if we get rid of those medical bays. Or building a new one out here. Which might not be a bad idea. Because that'll take away, I think, 20% research speed. Only, it seems like this is only going to last two days. So maybe it won't be too bad, but yeah. It's not ideal, obviously. You don't want to slow down tech at all. Speaking of tech, there's our factory. We just made room for it. Oh man, she is chonky. Can't rotate it, actually. It's just the way it is. Alright, hopefully that will get built up now as well. Ten people are building on it right now. Excellent. This is before the cold snap has happened, so if all goes well, which it looks like it is, we'll be able to start manufacturing our first automaton in time for the cold snap. Excellent. I thought we'd have to maybe just do it afterwards. So this is working out quite well. We're about to hit our coal limit, so I'm going to increase the storage for coal. And that way, yeah, now we're pretty good. This is still working away. We're getting through the sick people as well. We're down to 49 out of a potential 65. So that means that there's definitely buildings with nobody in them somewhere. Medical base. Yeah, this one doesn't have any, for instance. So I might just take the... Uh, just get out of there for now. Just turn this off. Or we'll maybe dismantle it. I'm not too sure yet what we're going to do there. It's either going to be tech. Housing or... Yeah, if, I don't know. Housing, I guess, if we ever get more people. I mean, we just lost five people. So technically, there's actually more room within the colony now. Uh, so, I could I always think we always had a probably about 20, I don't know, about 13 free homes. Now there's probably like almost a full house that's empty. So, if we took on like 20 people, for instance, I think we could probably only have to build one house. But I don't know. Alright, so there it is. Look at the factory. It looks good. Let's go photo mode and just take a quick look at that. I think it looks really nice. Can we ansel it? There we go. Yeah, it looks cool. I really love its look. The detail. Alright. Because you're never really supposed to look at the game this close. Alright, sorry. I just... I like cinematics. <laughs> I just like... It makes me want to make trailers. Alright, cool. So let's put those people we just took off the medical bay straight onto the factory. And they're all going to work. One of them's going to eat. And then we have automatons here. So factory will produce one automaton from 100 steel, 100 wood, 50 coal, and one steam core. So let's go. Straight away, there they are. They're working on it. And how long does it take? Not too sure. All right, cool. Well, the first automaton is running. And then, you know what? We'll put the automaton on steel tonight so that they keep producing steel so they can make more of themselves. Self-replicating automatons. That's basically what we're doing. How are the scouts getting along? So this guy is taking ages. This one's crossing the frozen lake to get to the research station. All right. I've got a, an abundance of food. In fact, we do always have seem I see I feel like we need even more room for resources. Can you believe by the way that we survived turning off the generator for 4 hours? I cannot believe that we got away, uh, it's like we managed to get away with that. 
It kind of seems ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that shouldn't happen, almost. I can't believe nobody fell gravely ill. But it didn't fully power down, so I guess there's something there, maybe. And it, yeah, it was only like three hours, but still. I'm just so surprised. I was thought for sure, as soon as I started think, seeing all that stuff melt away, so to speak, I was like, oh my god, this is the end. Speaking of the end, uh, we have 10 hours to go for the laws, so I want to get that prison built. One hour, okay, so we still have one day and nine hours for it. I'm taking my time on this now. I think it's important. <laughs> We've conserved a lot of coal as well because that because we haven't had the generator up high. But obviously, as soon as this cold snap hits, we're going to be suddenly ramping it up to two, two range, overdrive, whatever else we might need. We're going to be burning through that coal heavily. Uh, so hopefully we can get those automatons out and out and working pretty quick. What are we getting? The improved heaters. I think we need coal mining after that. Uh, the Londoners prey on discontent. A few are persuaded. A member of the Londoners is talking to a crowd. He's trying to scare as many people into joining the exodus to London, but his visions of doom ring false in the ears of people who are content with this, the situation in the city. Let him speak and 12, 12 people will join. Londoners will rise slightly, uh, ca cause the speaker, chase the speaker away, sorry, and then disperse the crowd. Discontent will rise, people may get hurt. I'm always going to choose that one, I think. Because we can handle it. You turn on your own people, you bloody bastard! How can you treat us like that just for listening to someone? That's Molly Gates. Shut the fuck up, Molly. <laughs> it's like, do you want more people to leave? And then we all die? How can they not understand? It's tempting to put this on a late shift. Although, no, because then we need to heat the steam hub. We'll leave it. So it got down um, 25% of the way there. Not bad. Maybe we activate the foreman in this building, so then tomorrow, when they start operating it, it'll do a little bit better. Uh, and speaking of... Oh, yeah, they didn't get done with it, so I didn't get to put the... Okay. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, so what now? So it's the, it's the night time. We have room to build five more houses. So bunkhouse one, two, three, four, five. So there we go. Hopefully I haven't made any critical mistake in doing that. But I think we're about to hit this cold snap. I want the homes to be as warm as possible. Um, and then hopefully everything will be alright. So let's speed it up then during the night. Let these homes get done. Have a little zoom in. Have a look at them maybe. A burial so ceremony is starting. Okay, hang on. Whoa. Turn this on then. Going to start a burial ceremony for those five people that died in the work accident. Need to at least keep people warm out there. I don't know if that's how it works, but god damn it. We have to try something. They're not there yet. They're probably just heading out there now. Yeah, it's cool. You can see them carrying like it's they're not quite crosses, they're just like symbols. I think that's so cool that they've done that in this game. That it's like their own religion. Because if you go down the faith route in the game, we went down order, you'll see these like religious symbols and stuff. I, I think that's so cool. I'm guessing that's what they're carrying. Maybe they're carrying something else, but shovels? <laughs> no, it looks like the way they're holding them, it's definitely some sort of religious proceeding. Procession. There they go. Dude, we're only at 23 sick people right now. That's awesome. I cannot believe it. Starting this episode, we had 75 sick, 20 not being treated. Now we only have 23 people just being treated, and that's it. That's incredible. Pulled it out of the bag. Somehow, although we did just lose five people, you know, I don't mean to be celebrating while there's a funeral procession going on, but got to, you know, they got to look for the silver lining. That's what I'd be saying at the the, the uh, funeral oration, that these people didn't die in vain, that their contributions to steel carried us through the night, that they live on in the homes that we built, you know. When you're sleeping at home safe and sound in your bunkhouse, know that it was possible thanks to the people who gave their lives. Everyone has played a part. Alright, so... Um... What now? <laughs> we'll just speed it up, I guess. Everything's looking peachy clean. Peachy keen. Food is coming in in the morning. We've got plenty. We're getting through it. People have been fed well. The discontent is quite low because of that. People are just getting sick right now. So we sick is barreled up. As it does every night. It's not to be... It's no surprise. It happens every night. 
Cold, I think, is probably our biggest concern for this cold snap that we're about to hit. Uh, so we'll turn this off now. It seems like it's over. All right, let's keep it going then. So what is our burn rate right now? It's only five per hour, I think. And it's probably a little bit more. I think that's just the generator. It's not tell. It's not. Yeah, because these are different. Uh, okay, a book of laws. Okay, so now we need to enable the prison. Now that's going to cause prison building roundup to catch wrongdoers. Prisoners will abandon their misguided views. Oh, that's actually interesting. I didn't know that. Their misguided views. Maybe it converts Londoners then. You'll have to build a prison. Discontent will rise slightly. 40 steel to build it. And we have 22 hours to do it. Okay. New law in the city. Look sharp. Remember, we mustn't shrink from our duties, says Christopher North. Charlotte Woodington says, well, I can remember worse mornings and better ones, too. People abandoned the Londoners are down to 38 now, so only seven people abandoned them this time. Actually, I think it might have been six. Because I didn't, I feel like one of the Londoners died in that workplace, but I could be wrong. Could be wrong. So we're down to 38 now with four days to go. So I feel like, yeah, we might need to do something. We need to buff up this hope even further. Run more propaganda if we can. Run another patrol. Yeah, for sure, run another patrol. That lowers our discontent down. And then as soon as... Yeah, I think when we activate this, cooldown's probably in just a few hours. Then, then we should really buff this up. And if we lose that temporary modifier of the adults dying, I should go down to three chevrons, which would be amazing. People would be super hopeful then. Uh, we can't build the prison just yet. We don't have enough steel. So that's what we're going to have to get during the night or during the day. And we're about to hit the cold snap. In fact, it's about to hit right now. So we should start raising this up now. Because it takes a while to actually hit the next level. We don't want our buildings to go offline. The workshop is going to go offline. There's not much we can do about that. Let's turn on that overdrive just for now while the heat, while we get up to level 2. I was a little slow to it there. Alright, we're at negative 70 degrees now, but these buildings should come back online in just a sec. Medical bays. Although a lot of them aren't even needed, which is great. So if I was to have a look at this one and go, okay, there's people going to treatment in that one. What about this one? There's nobody in this one, so let's just go, you know what, forget it. Get out of there. Actually, stay in there. Get out of here. People are just going to treatment here, so we can at least just turn this one off. So those two medical bays are off now. These ones are on. Okay. Well, we're going into this situation pretty good, I think, generally speaking. Most homes are quite warm. They're going to be chilly, which isn't too bad, you know, generally speaking. Some homes are going to be cold. There's one, two, three, four, five, five tenths, I think, that we've left cold. So that's a moderate risk. But we have great facilities now <laughs> to take care of them. So I think it's, I think it could be a lot worse, putting it mildly. All right. Some people were asking as well about, oh yeah, we need to turn off these. Don't work on these buildings. That's okay. H hope is going to lower down. We can't operate the watchtowers. There's just no way. Oh, damn. The tendency is only level one now. That sucks. I thought we were really close to getting to level three. Oh yeah. And the tech building. My bad as well. Let's turn that off. All right. So as the steam hubs heat up, this should fix this area. Should fix these areas and turn them back on. Cool. Automatons are being produced. And we're now gathering steel. We're collecting steel again. Improved heaters have been researched. Awesome. So now I think overdrive couplings, right? Or coal mining. Actually, coal mining. Yeah, it's got to be coal mining. We need 10 steel, though, before we can begin it. We're really close to that. Just one more steel, please. Oh, my God. How long does it take? There we go. Pretty tempted to do the overdrive couplings. We have the overdrive on right now. Do we need it on? I think we do need it on, yeah. Because we'll go down below Chile for a lot of places. So we actually need it on in a lot of places. Now we can activate the heaters to offset it when we turn it off in the workplaces. But for the during the day, I think we'll just ride out the free... See, having the overdrive on overdrives the steam hubs as well. That means these places are chilly without us having to turn on the heaters. So if we can ride the overdrive at least during the day, 
then work time we're saving a bunch of that extra heater coal and then during the night when people aren't working all these steam hubs go offline that's all fine everyone retreats into the city and then only the medical bays are the ones that are going to need to be heated up so i think that's just like a more efficient way of doing it i could be wrong maybe i'm missing something but that's that's my line of thinking on that so 300 raw food um and this is actually the cookhouse is too cold so let's heat that one up that obviously needs to go and so does the hothouse so those two we can afford the heating on that one but it is a bit concerning, you know, we are low on... Hey! First automaton, done! Automatons are mankind's greatest creation, says Dean Palmer. Jane Ratcliffe says, are automatons dangerous? I heard it can replace an entire team of workers. I didn't see what the other comment was. Now, we can't build another one yet, we don't have to steal. <clears throat> so we'll just take them off that. But we can now make steel during the night, which should be good. So let's just halt operation on that. It's a bit of a shame, actually, because I did use a foreman. What do you mean? Yeah, a bit of a waste. So what we can do is we can now move that. I'll zoom in and have a look at it in a second. But we can move the automaton to work on thumping up coal and maybe put down a new gathering post. I don't know if that's a crazy thing to do. If there's enough heat in this area to heat us up with a gathering post. I don't think so. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like we can get away with that. If this gathering post was there and we had another one here, then maybe. I don't think it'll actually fit anyway. Yeah. Not much we can do there then. So how can we increase our coal production? We're getting coal mining now. So then the automatons can work on coal during the night. That's a, a, a gosh darn shame. There's just no room for us to get that extra heat. There is a technology that extends the range, obviously, but yeah. Hmm. Alright, well, yeah, I don't think there's anything we can do about that. I mean, washing up more coal is almost pointless because we're gathering it at the most, at the most we can anyway. So it's almost pointless doing that. So what are we going to even get our automaton to do then? <laughs> I'm not too sure. Damn it. Well, for now, we I mean, it's obviously put it on something. So we'll just put it on this for now. We'll wash up some coal. Let it go out to do that work. And then during the night, we're going to come back and put it on steel. There it is. It's got a little light at the front of it as well. So what it does is every now and then it goes over towards a steam hub to refuel. Uh, I don't know if it actually takes coal as it does that. Maybe it does. Or if it's just it's just constantly added. It's probably just constantly added to your burn rate, my guess. Uh, these are less efficient than people. They do work buildings, but they're less efficient. It's kind of like the equivalent of having it at like half strength, I think. Awesome. The tendency is back down uh, to level 2, which is good. We have more room for extra resources, should we need them. Hunting is all good. Alright, yeah, I don't think we need anything else. And how's the temperature? Oh, we didn't build the prison. Time is running out for that, 16 hours to go. So that's what we need to do with the extra steel we got. We need 40 steel for that. Okay, so as soon as we get 40, we'll build it. Good thing I remembered. It has 15 hours to go, so I mean, we have time, but... We should build that. So here's the automaton. Using automatons, a word of advice. Our first automaton is operational. This will help our economy greatly. Automatons can replace entire manual, manual labor crews. They work around the clock with short breaks at refuel to refuel at the generator or steam hubs. We can research upgrades to increase their efficiency and capability. All right. All right, we can build the prison now. Order, order. How much is its heat level actually? It's actually heat level 3, which is great. So we could slam it down anywhere, really, around here. I like here. It kind of fits, so I don't see why not. It is very cold to be building that, though, apparently. So that's just the way it is. <laughs> it's going to be very cold no matter where we build it. Maybe I should have built it before that, before the cold snap, though. All right, let's speed it up to times 2. You can see the automatons now going to latch onto the building. There it goes. So it's like latched on now. What is this? An indignant woman. Sir, while our guards... Sorry. 
Sir, our guards have reported this woman for attacking them on patrol. She was cursing them and hitting them with their fist, uh, with her fists when they brought her in. I would have come myself, the woman says. Those swine, these swine have been pestering me day in, day out, and I'm sick of it. They say they need to check if everyone's in order, but it's just an excuse for them to make advances. Punish her, hope will fall. Reprimand the guards, hope will rise slightly, or skip this district on patrol. Hope will rise, using the patrol will have less effect. Uh, we'll reprimand the guards, you know. Don't be making advances on poor Hilda here. Leave her alone. Anything to rise, raise hope. But that might cause, us, cause issues later, we'll see. 16 hours to go on the gen. But we will be turning off... Mm, yeah, we'll see about that. A lot of our steam hubs will go offline. Two of our steam hubs will go offline, which will save us a little bit of time. Alright, so even with base heating level 3, this goes down to very cold. So let's heat it up. I know it's a prison, but we'll heat it up nonetheless. And we'll assign some people in there. Hope rises. The prison's open. You, pr you proved that your promise of increased safety and order wasn't just hollow words. Okay, that was a tiny amount of hope. Come on. But there you go. We've got some hope in there. So, almost everyone needs to be just dismissed as they're in treatment, but one guard should be fine, right? I don't see an issue with that. Kaylin Holden. Harvey Payne, we saw him earlier in the episode. Emilia de Canard, wife of Eminstein Canard. Alright. No prisoners though, right? Yeah, we don't actually have any prisoners. That's the thing, it's more just like a deterrent. But if we have riots or high discontent, then it'll help. This does seem like a waste. So what would this do? Prison guards will round up wrongdoers and put them in prison. They'll go after Londoners, dissidents, and any other troublemakers. Prisoners will be returned to society after four days? We only have three days, 14 hours left. But maybe they convert while they're in there. Oh, I don't know. If we could get them to convert. Discontent will fall. Bucket. <laughs> oh my god, yes. It just brought them down immediately. So who do we have? Oh, guys, you're breaking my heart. Jack Absolute. Rokas Nodulus. You guys were going to leave me? Elizabeth Corey. Edward Lean. Don't recognize these. Don't recognize anyone apart from Jack Absolute and Ro uh, Rokas. Can't believe you guys are going to leave me. So that that's, uh, you know, that's rough. Four days we're taking them off, off work, essentially, but... Are they sick as well? What happens if they're sick? Some of them are engineers and, and the like. We'll have to see how that affects us. We did have an excess of extra people though, and we're getting through the sick, so I think we've, if there was ever a time to do it, it's actually now. That did seem to work though. We did bring that number down. What was it on 30? I feel like it was 38, but it might've been 36. So now there's still gonna be a tendency drop uh, in the next couple days as well. Scouts have reached the research station. Okay, let's check out what's going on. The door of the research station has been bashed in. There are signs of fighting inside, broken furniture, damaged scientific instruments, and spatters of blood. The last discovery. Inside the ransack station, we found Tesla's audio diary. A voice speaks. All the observed changes, like suns dimming, volcanic ash, could not have caused such cooling. But what if the huge quake of 1887 in Patagonia was, a, was an asteroid strike? There's shouting crashes and then silence. Interesting. Numerous tracks lead from the door towards the mountains. I am available for uh, voice work, by the way. <clears throat> Which I'm definitely, definitely capable of. Alright, cool. I didn't even look at what we got there. So that's revealed to us the hideout. What is it? The cave hideout and the icebound dreadnought. I'm going to go to the icebound dreadnought. Silhouette of a huge ship. It's most likely the wreckage of the USS Prometheus. The other American Dreadnought. There are no signs of life. Alright. And where's our other gr group? They are seven hours away from the Shrouded Cave. Okay. And how's our outpost guy doing? Where is he going? I actually don't know where he is. Which is weird. Hmm. Maybe he's just at the fishing village right now. Okay, so let me take stock of the situation again. We have 57 steel now. 
It's still the work day. We're gonna get... I'm not gonna put them on overtime, though. No, that's fine. Oh, I should have made them have the rations, though. I'll do that anyway just now. It still counts for tomorrow, so it's all fine. Although, maybe it would have been smarter to do it at the end of the day. Ah, oh, whatever. So they'll work just a little bit more efficiently on these on the steel manufacturing. And then during the night, we should get enough steel that tomorrow we start manufacturing another automaton. Or we could use that steel to actually upgrade some houses. But I think we're handling the amount of sick we got right now, so I think I'm okay with it. Uh, and what did we just get? Oh, was it overdrive couplings? No, it was the coal mining. Awesome. So we could go with coal mining optimization, which means 10% more efficiency from the coal mining itself. Or we could go with overdrive couplings. We'll get that later. We don't, we're not going to utilize that now. So we'll go with overdrive coupling or uh, coal, optim Ugh. coal mining optimization. And we'll slam down some coal mines during the day tomorrow. Coal is at 800. Looks like we will have enough to get us through the night, I think. So stick an automaton on this. It should unhinge itself from this building. All it was doing was churning up coal. Uh, churning up coal. All it did was 40 as well. It's not that much. So they'll gather. Although I guess they were gathering it as well. So it'll it'll walk over, latch onto the steam steelworks, and just start working on that building by itself throughout the night, producing just a little bit of steel. It'd be interesting to see how much we get by the by the morning. It would have been more efficient if I had it near there in the first place, but whatever. So we're on 51 steel now. We'll see what we get in the morning. Uh, how's the hope situation? It's pretty good. We could activate propaganda again. People seem to die every time I do this. But we need the hope. That was a great amount of hope. But we're still only on two. I don't want anyone leaving. We're only at 12 sick people. Can you believe it? Can you? It's a modern miracle. <laughs> It's insane. I can't believe we've gotten away with that. Where is our expedition? Our outpost. Hang on. Where are they? There they are. 12 hours. Okay, cool, cool. They were just coming out of the... Okay, they were just gathering the food. Oh my god. What the hell was this? Prisoners at large. Sir, all the prisoners have been released from one of our prisons. People are scared when they see criminals on the streets. We better do something. Oh, is, oh the guy was sick and he left the building. Yeah. Alright, sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Oh, we got rid of it all. This is an order. This is the complete opposite. Colin Clark. Why are the prisoners on the streets? Is something wrong at the prison? <laughs> yeah, you'd think so. It's all right. All right. We got him back. Sorry. Mistake. It's just like a guy is just sick. He's like, oh, I'm heading off to the medical bay. He just opens all the gates. Everyone just runs out. I love that the tracks in the snow from the automaton has actually stayed there. From people, it fills in pretty quickly, but the automaton's ones have actually stayed. It just looks cool. All right. Uh, is there much else to do? So another little recap. Scouting party heading to the west. Oh, no. Heading to the... Um, Dreadnought is going south. It has 154 wood, 59 steel, and two steam cores. That's pretty important. We get them home. And then we got the guys going to the shrouded cave. Everything back home is pretty good. We have 47 people not doing anything. Only nine people sick. We are unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unprecedented. Let's just take the workers off this building. Shut this one down. Uh, let's take the workers off this one. Shut it down. Don't need it. Can you? I kind of... I'm I stunned. That this has worked, work, has actually worked. <laughs> Take that down. All right. I was gonna build something here, so we might actually just dismantle this thing first, because it, there's it's available steam hub space, which is valuable. So we'll dismantle it during the night, as it is within steam hub range. So we have one here, and one here. No one in that one. No one in that one. No. Oh my days. I mean, yeah, we've only got nine sick people. I mean, most of the infirmaries probably don't have anybody in them. Of course, during the night we'll definitely get sick people, but. We'll just close these for now. No point having engineers working in places if they just don't need to be there. And what we could do in the meantime is just man the uh, towers just to make it, I don't know, look a little nicer. The ones that are chilly at least. Man the prison. They're chilly as well, so no problem.
There we go. Alright, so if we were to check the infirmary... We have four patients in there. We have A.B., Jacko, Roman Alexiev, and Theo Mistian. So that's three patrons. Joseph Fallon is a patron. Charles Cayley I don't recognize. And then we have William Rainsford and August Whiteman. All right. I can't believe we've gotten through so many sick people. That's incredible. And uh, we seem to be doing fine for coal and stuff, amazingly. The generator is still in overdrive. In fact... We'll turn that overdrive off. Although that means we go down to cold. Uh, I guess we'll keep it on. I guess we'll keep it on. Alright, the automaton has just arrived. So we started at 51 steel. It's at 64 now. Obviously, it does kind of turn up the resources a little quicker than the animation gets there, but that's fine. There he goes, he's, he's plonked down. Looking good. I love the wheels and cogs turning. Looks so cool. So yeah, just free steel, sort of. Uh, once we get up to 100 steel, then we can just make another one in the morning. This is awesome. 30 minutes until we reach our next destination with one of our scouts. People are getting sick tonight, but that's okay. They're all being treated right now. We have capabilities of treating 30 people at least. Oh wow, they actually reached the Dreadnought before they reached the guys on the on the west reach. Uh, they reached the Dreadnought in the south before the other group reached the Shrouded Cave in the west. Alright, explore. So, uh, most of the machinery aboard the USS Prometheus has been dismantled and taken away. The massive steam hammer used to split the thickest ice lies between those ships, lies broken by the ship's bow. Calculating genius. The Dreadnought is stripped of useful machinery, but its hulk contains enough steel to justify establishing an outpost here. <gasps> it's a steel outpost area! Hooray! Yes, that's probably what we're going to get. On the bridge, we found a log with Tesla's last orders. Transfer all supplies and able-bodied survivors aboard Hephaestus. Take the amputees only if you have prostheses to make them useful. Sites discovered an abandoned sawmill. Awesome! We can use this as an outpost for steel. All right, let's head to the abandoned sawmill, and then we'll come back. These guys are carrying a lot. 400 wood, 160 steel, and four steam cores. Oh my god. There's a dark opening at the base of the hill, hill, probably an entrance to a cave. We can see some smoke coming out of it. I'm a little scared of that one. So I'm going to go to the abandoned sawmill, and then just head back home, and then we'll come back out to the cave. Uh, if we could set up another outpost, we need to do that immediately, which I think we can. What do we need for outposts? 25 wood, 45 steel. Ugh. So you can do it that way, right? And that's like another outpost. Or can you ever just add another party? The building can't support another expedition. Limits are one. Ten citizens must be available. Hmm. But I'm assuming... Faster outpost teams. Oh, it does look like it's just one. I don't see anywhere that says more outpost teams. So maybe we do just have to build out of the thing. I, I kind of want the automaton first. Maybe that's wrong with me. Yeah, I'm going to go with the automaton first. So once we get to 100 steel, then automaton we're going to build. And then we're going to use all remaining steel to set up another outpost. And then we'll go get steel coming in. I don't know though. In my head I'm just thinking like shouldn't we focus on the thing that actually produces steel more in the long run? What's my thinking, I guess? I'm just thinking out loud now, just bear with me. What is my thinking for getting another another automaton? It's so that we can have two steel factories running in the night or coal mining running in the night. Yeah. All right. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I'll let it heat up because then we have to build out here and people people might get sick. So when the heating arrives in a day, then we build the outpost. Yeah, that makes sense. It's too it's too far out to be building stuff during the 70 degrees, negative 70. Okay, I justified it to myself. All right, speed it up. We don't have much time left. We'll wait until the morning and then we'll probably call it actually. 
People abandoned the Londoners are down to 23 now. That's excellent. Still more than I would like, though. What was... I, can't, I keep forgetting what it was on before that. I just see the number after it's down. But we have three days left. Still trending downwards quite heavily, which is good. We could do more patrols pretty soon, raising hope even further. So we've reached the... Oh, it's a children's hideout. I was going to say, it was called like a cave or something. The cave is a hideout for some children who were evacuated from Winterholm. There are no adult survivors here. We should talk to the kids and take them to our city. So there doesn't seem to be any other locations. Maybe we'll find one, though. Little survivors. Aww. We talked to the children in the hideout. They said one night their teachers and some hunters took them out from Winterholm on a secret adventure. Teachers told them they were going to stay here for a while. When the food ran low, their guardians went back to get more, and they didn't return. It seems like these kids were evacuated in time, but things in their city got really ugly. Uh, escort the children to the city, send the children to the city, or leave the children to their fate. We'll send them, we'll go back to them. See, I don't think there's no extra location. I don't think I'd send them back anyway, I'm not that cruel. So we'll, we'll escort them back. So that's 34, so that's another child's shelter we'll need. Hmm. We do have room, actually, some, where some of those medical bays used to be. Alright, so let's escort them back. That requires homes as well, though, so that's at least two more homes. Okay. We took care of the children. We, f we formed the children into an orderly column and set off towards the city. They walk quietly and resolutely like little adults, the youngest clutching their toys tightly. Oh my god. <laughs> this is going to be a long journey. Please have enough warm beds prepared for their arrival. I will. That's going to take a day and three hours. It's always interesting. Like, it took me two days to get there, but it takes half the amount of time to get back. I guess it's because, like, well, we figured out the route, I suppose you could say. All right, guys, that's going to be it. That's going to be it for this episode. Children are on their way back. Th this was an amazing run. I mean, this has gone very well. So right now, the current situation as it stands is we have 30 people who are sick being treated. We have numerous sick bays that are just offline. We could easily tend to all the sick that we have right now. So I'm going to do that. It's negative 70 degrees. Our cold has just about gotten us through it. Um, so we're fine. We built our first automaton. We uh, stored our excess storage as much as we needed to. Uh, I think wood production is probably quite low. Coal production is still a little bit low. But we just got coal mines. So we can now set up two coal mines. We're going to set up a new outpost to get steel coming in. Things are looking very good. We're on day 27. And I think we're in a really good position. We did lose five people though. I mean five people died in an industrial accident. Apparently over here. And uh, we could check those names now. Oh, they're not... For some reason, yeah, we had the burial ceremony, but I don't see their names here. It does seem to take a while to pop up. I'm not too, too sure why that is, but... We did read out their names when it happened. Um, Rotor Roban, I think, was the only one I could think of that was a patron. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the situation, guys. I'm having an absolute blast with this. And I can't believe... I thought we, this was... The, I thought turning this on today, immediately people are going to get gravely ill. We're going to have to radical treatment them, take off limbs. People are going to stop working. Discontent was super high, but we managed to sort out a lot of our problems. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.